concerning this Coney 2012. Now, remember, this is a, a video which is now up to 50 million views as of uh, early this afternoon. And this is a warmonger video. This is uh, the desire to turn American students into militant warmongers for imperialism in Africa. Just a little background. Take a look at my book, Obama the Postmodern Coup, The Making of a Manchurian Candidate. This book is nothing short of prophetic. Sorry if I have to say so myself, but it's prophetic. One of the basic theses about the Obama foreign policy is it will be focused on Africa. It will be focused on Africa with a view to kicking the Chinese out of Africa. The Chinese will work with any government to secure strategic raw materials. And in that area around Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, the Lake District, between Zaire, Kenya, and these areas, there's tremendous deposits of copper, cobalt, uranium, gold, magnesium, tin, plus the rare earths, right, the molybdenum and other exotic rare earth uh, minerals. These strategic raw materials, these strategic minerals are what's at stake in Africa. Same thing in Zimbabwe, same thing in Katanga province in uh, southern Congo. So I warned Africa will become a battlefield between the U.S. and China. The U.S. will seek to destroy, to use the creative chaos that Condoleezza Rice conjured up back in 2005 and has been the staple of U.S. policy. It's another way of saying scorched earth. Uh, rather than let the Chinese develop it and engage in trade relations, however one-sided or however uh, abusive, destroy everything. So that's obviously worse. Uh, and the other side of the uh, thesis of Obama, the postmodern coup, was the attempt of Obama will be to take people who were uh, anti-war and turn them into militant warmongers. It was from anti-war in 2007, five years later, to make the same college kids and, and, and similar people, foundation-funded operatives leading the charge, into militant imperialist warmongers. In other words, people leading the charge, demanding war, demanding more military aid for Uganda, demanding uh, essentially an invasion of Uganda, whatever they say, all these quibbles, right? We, we get it. Uh, those are simply, uh, you know, plausible denial. But the, the, the thrust of this thing is the U.S. should invade Uganda and capture and kill this, uh, this character. Uh, Co Joseph Coney. Now, uh, this is this is the horror, right? Remember, with Bush and Cheney, they said after 9/11, go out, go to go to the mall, go to the shopping center, buy something, and you'll be helping the U.S. economy. That's all you. That's all you need to do. Samantha Power and her clique, these imp left-wing imperialists, clever, foaming liberal imperialists. They said, no, that's horrible. They were horrified by Bush and Cheney. They wanted total war, total sacrifice, total austerity, total mobilization against the powers of a dictatorship. But Gene Sharp was there, too, and the Albert Einstein Institute, and the National Endowment for Democracy, and, and the entire uh, crew. They wanted to mobilize for a new phase of imperialism. Right? As I point out in the book, it's the, it's the contrast between... The passive ascent to imperialism a la Schopenhauer and the active, militant, fascistic, social fascistic imperialism as argued for by Nietzsche and by Ayn Rand. All right, don't forget her, because that's similar. So that's what we have now. Now, no, notice, they, they basically, they're picking out this guy, Kony. Uganda has problems that go far beyond Kony. Uh, they have about 40% of the people of Uganda live on less than one euro per day, less than a dollar and a quarter or a dollar thirty per day, whatever it is. Um, Uganda has been under the dictatorship of Yoweri Museveni, Museveni, top imperialist enforcer, top imperialist asset. He's been there since 1986, and in some ways, Joseph Kony is the, the Siamese twin of Museveni because he's the opposition 
against Museveni that emerged, and the, it's it's based based ec- ethnically, right, and tribally, as often happens in Africa. These things that have religious or ideological names uh, turn out to be tribal. In this case, it's that Museveni comes from the uh, the southern or central part of Uganda, whereas the Acholi ethnic group uh, in northern Uganda along the Sudanese border, they're the ones who rebelled against Museveni uh, and then were assisted in that by the government of Sudan. And the reason for that is, um, I think I've told this story before, when I was in Khartoum in the mid-1990s, uh, the information minister at that time, Ghazi, showed us the, the crates of weapons with rifles, and it said, Defense Ministry of Uganda, Kampala, Uganda. So the, it was the choice for the Sudanese was either the Ugandans, you, as a base of British imperialism, were going to be fomenting the, the uh, rebellion in southern Sudan, the area that now has seceded, or the Sudanese would send it back the other way. But whatever this is, these are things of the past. Uh, the Lord's Resistance Army, LRA, Lord's Resistance Army of Joseph Kony, is now a negligible force. A lot of them have fled into southern Sudan. They're down to a couple of hundred uh, h- hardcore people, few thousand ideological supporters. This is nothing. Uh, remember, this is the area where, in the mid-1990s, we had Susan Rice helping along the massacre, right, in Rwanda, Burundi, right, where the, the, um, the uh, essentially the, the Hutu Tutsi uh, 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 enemy uh, status was played then into a, into a massacre. But even more than that, what happened after that, right, the Great African War, the, the war in the Congo from about 1998, 1999, for about five years, it killed six to eight million people. This is the big thing that's gone on there. That's why Uganda is this wreck. So Uganda, with Rwanda, Burundi, they were one side of this war against Congo, in which uh, all sorts of people, right? Sudan intervened on the side of Congo, and Angola on the side of Congo, and quite a few others. So this was the the main way that imperialism was wrecking. Africa around the turn of the of the millennium. This is why uh, Uganda is largely a destroyed society. But in the course of that, Uganda uh, occupied the northern third of Congo, and uh, the atrocities were on big time. Again, this is where six to eight million people died. It's the biggest genocide since World War II. Not a word about this in any of these things. So now we've got the imperialist stooge and hypocrite Ocampo, right? Ocampo, the head of the International Criminal Court. He has indicted Joseph Kony. Oh, yeah, he indicted Milosevic. He indicts, you know, Gaddafi. I'm sure Assad will come soon, General Bashir of Sudan. Hey, Ocampo, how about the indictments for Bush and Cheney and the neocons in the Pentagon, right, Wolfowitz? We're still waiting for those. Where are they? And then you've got Senator Imhoff, the uh, reactionary Republican, Kerry, Sue Davis, Democrat of uh, California. Feingold is interested in this. So it shows that uh, everybody in the Democratic Party, but everybody, has feet of clay. Susan Rice, of course, on board, that boy, that bubbling cauldron of hatred. So... Um, this is part of the attempt to get the U.S. into Africa. The specific demand of this film is to upgrade the Ugandan army. More military aid for Uganda. Let's support the army that went into Congo and killed millions of people and call that activism and humanitarianism. This is ridiculous. This is disgusting. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. Welcome to the second hour of World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarpley reporting from Washington, D.C. So, we're doing a mobilization to support the Walter Jones uh, House Concurrent Resolution 107, March 7th, 2012. The sense of Congress that the use of offensive military force by a president 
without prior and clear authorization of an act of Congress constitutes an impeachable high crime and misdemeanor under Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution. And we want Ron Paul to use his campaign soapbox to dedicate his campaign 100%. We're not going to be satisfied with lip service, throwaway lines, grudging assent. We want this to become the totality of the stump speech. We want to hear about this in every debate, in every interview, in every TV ad. We want Ron Paul to make TV ads with all that money and put this out in big states that are coming up, New York, California, Illinois. We want to see this issue pushed forward, not his plans to rape food stamps by cutting the program two-thirds so that uh, significant parts of 50 million Americans who depend on food stamps have to starve. So it's time uh, to show, are you all hat and no cattle, or uh, or what is it there, Congressman? So members of the House, obviously, uh, very much in the uh, driver's seat on impeachment. So uh, what a wonderful thing that we have one of them running for Congress. He could actually do something. So the Coney 2012 film... Uh, confirms my thesis in Obama, the postmodern coup, which you ought to buy and read, that uh, Obama would make uh, Africa a battlefield with the Chinese for the sake of denying them strategic minerals, strategic raw materials, and oil, oil available there in South Sudan, the the, uh, mini-state, micro-state, rump state that the U.S. has now detached, at least for the moment, from from Sudan, and I've been in the capital there, Juba, uh, back in the mid-90s. Um, take a look around. Now, obviously, Libya going into chaos. We've got uh, the eastern part, the Cyrenaica, right? Terrorist heaven in Derna, uh, the Benghazi-Tobruk corridor. Uh, they, want, uh, they want to be independent. They want that oil money for themselves. Even Jalil, the NATO agent, says this is too much, but... Uh, I'm sure NATO will be happy to deal with uh, with any rebels. The weaker, the tinier, the more impotent, the more mini-state, micro-state, the better for the imperialists. Uh, notice, though, Libya, when you look at that, that array of countries, Mali, Chad, uh, Niger, uh, places like this, uh, they depended on Libyan development aid. In particular, we know that uh, food production in Mali and, and Chad was supported by the Libyans, uh, that was last year. That's all gone. That's all over. So part of the uh, effect of the collapse of Libya will be felt in that Sahel, the greater Sahel, across uh, the Sahara and the sub-Saharan, in particular Sahel. Uh, We've also got Nigeria. Nigeria is uh, the scene of of an Italian has been taken hostage in Nigeria by the Boko Haram... uh, Islamic extremists, you can see this scenario, right? Play the Islamic extremists, play your uh, Al-Qaeda-style forces, right? Libyan Islamic fighting group, the Belhaj people, in other words. Uh, play them against the Christians or the government or whatever it is. Ivory Coast, of course, we followed last year. That's where this whole thing got going. The French intervening genocidally to impose their puppet candidate for president of Ivory Coast. He was an international monetary fund official. He's now ruling in the country. Remember that uh, Obama's cousin Odinga is a big cheese in Kenya, and that Kenya invaded Somalia a few months ago. Uh, This is the the town of uh, Kisame, and the the French were there uh, bombarding from the ocean, right, killing a whole bunch of... uh, of black Africans, but of course under left cover. Sorry, this is Kiss Mayo. They were allegedly attacking Al Shabab because Al Shabab militia crosses, they say, into Kenya to kidnap people. The continued campaign against Mugabe of uh, of Zimbabwe, but in the middle of it, invisible children. God knows what that is. Is that in the same class with I don't know what uh, uh, any of these? Uh, intelligence front organizations that we've come to see. TRI is their fundraising branch. Uh, 
This is very slick. It's uh, very much a project democracy extravaganza. And now we've got people who are telling Obama, be more imperialist, intervene more. And, of course, the fact that this is going on on campuses cannot help but spill over to someplace like uh, Syria, where we've got all kinds of uh, people demanding intervention into Syria. Let's just see. we got the, the, the Washington Post uh, editorial page, of course, uh, demanding something uh, more. Uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, obviously, uh, the warmongers having a, a field day. So uh, no credibility for Coney 2012. This is supposed to come to a paroxysm on the 20th of uh, April. Uh, don't be a militant warmonger. Don't be a dupe for Obama's imperialist power cartel, but rather boycott this thing, denounce it. Get on, uh, get on Twitter and uh, have a go at Coney 2012 as the latest uh, imperialist uh, recruiting tool, right? Are the invisible children, is that the propaganda arm of U.S. AFRICOM, or, uh, or what is it?